today's video is gonna be short and sweet. It's just a quick, mostly a tutorial over these disco balls. I'll insert a better clip here. Um, and a little side note of why I think it's important to incorporate free play into your painting practice. Now, I know if you're on the outside, if you don't have an art practice, you might think, well, like, isn't painting play? Isn't like making art play? And yes, yes, mostly it is, that's true. Um, but whenever you become a full-time artist or you begin to do it for commerce of any kind, um, sometimes it's hard to maintain the buoyancy, the fun, the lightness that painting initially offered. And it doesn't mean you don't love it. it doesn't, it's just because it's complicated, you don't dislike painting. But I find that it's really important to still have something that you just have no expectations on, right? You walk into your studio, you look around, you grab supplies, you play. And I try really hard to incorporate a little bit of this every single week. Most of the time I don't make something I can finish or show or really film. Um, but this time I came up with a finished product and so it's a two for one special. You get to see a tutorial and you get to be gassed up on why it's so important to just have unstructured art in your painting practice. So if you're interested in that, stick around. Thanks for watching, thanks for being here, and I hope you enjoy the video. So the desire to have this unstructured free play time in my studio practice um, happened a few years into my art becoming pretty much my full-time job. Um, and what happened was this expectation to have a finished product um, became pretty heavy. Um, it still is. It's still, you still have, you know, it feels like work when you paint, even if you enjoy painting. And one strategy that I came up with is having a little bit of time. Usually it's on the weekends or, um, just a, a, if I already have like some content to post on social media, I'll mark out a day and make it a free play day. And the goal is that I don't have to post it to social media. I don't have to share it with anyone. It's just for me time. And what be, what was so nice about this, specifically having it structured and scheduled into my schedule, um, was that I didn't have this guilt for not working on something like a commission. I mean, I'm at the point now where I'm very fortunate, but I almost always have a commission I could be working on. And giving myself permission to take the play seriously was life-changing. So some week it's something like collage where I'll cut up some of my palettes and some magazine and I'll throw it together. Um, some weeks it's watercolor where I'll just sort of mix watercolor and I'll mark on top of it with a colored pencil and just play around. Um, but one thing I've always loved is rubber stamps. Um, years ago I made a whole set of these for myself for marketing materials, uh, for like thank you notes and stuff. Uh, because I was too broke to do um, like real thank you cards and I loved them. I thought it was so fun. I love the idea of having to work backwards. I also love the idea that it's sort of permanent. And so on this day, I walked into my studio with my idea, a loose idea, and I started carving. So here's three reasons why I think this unstructured time is so helpful and beneficial to you as a person and your painting practice. So the first reason is it really helps to strengthen your problem solving. A lot of times when I'm doing my free play, I, I sometimes paint, but I'm usually working outside of my typical medium and style. And this is great because when you're unfamiliar with things, you're not, you're not as good at it. And forcing yourself to problem solve in a new way that's really different from your normal practice is helpful because a lot of times those skills you learn and the way to sort of picture things in your head be, can become helpful in your painting practice. And so for me, it's a way to sort of sharpen up those skills and really hone my problem solving skills, which is so important if you're a painter. If you're an artist of any kind, you are basically a professional problem solver, which is pretty cool. The second reason is because it's just helpful and fun. Sometimes I feel like that should be enough of a reason, um, but if you're not convinced, if you have a strict schedule and you don't have time for fun, I will just remind you that the more you fill yourself up creatively, the more you're gonna be able to utilize that creativity in a way that does help you pay your bills if you are paying your bills with your art. So having that unstructured time, I always think of it like a release valve. It sort of lets off some steam. You're still in your studio. You're still doing something. You're not binging on Netflix. It's a fun way to tap into that flow state or that nice meditative state that you get into when you're creating something without it being entirely passive, um, which is really good for you in whole. I'll try to link some articles I've read about the importance of being in a flow state. Um, but if you gravitated towards art because it helped you so much like emotionally and then that became your job, um, it's important to remember that you still need 
the benefits of being creative offers you and if your art is your work sometimes you need to find that creativity in other ways and this can be a great way to sort of fill that need and the last reason and the reason that I am always so compelled to come back to it is because a lot of these little side projects whether or not I come up with a finished product or even finish it at all um, is because a lot of these little fun projects will find their way back into my work sometimes I'll make something that's a side project love it and then it becomes a main project although that's not super often more likely what happens is I'll make something with no goal in mind just for fun and it'll do something the way I layer the medium I'm working in and it reminds me that that's something I want to incorporate into my actual painting practice and that's so helpful it's an amazing tool to have a lot of times because we think of our day and our schedule and our lifestyle as oh I do art we will deprive ourselves from other forms of creativity and that can be really harmful to your practice and your personal health so those are the three reasons i keep coming back to free play i always have a little bit of free play time scheduled into my week it's some of my best times of the week i love it and if you haven't incorporated it into your practice this is your this is your chance this is your call um and tag me if you find yourself doing like a free play day i would love to see it and let me know what you think, if it helps your practice, if it helps your mood, if it makes you feel better, um, I'd love to know. So I started off this project with the idea that I wanted to make a disco ball hand stamp. The reason is I've been playing around with trying to get merchandise, so shirts and stuff like that, and I'm trying to do as much as I can in studio um, or just at home. I don't want to do drop shipping if possible, just personal reasons. Um, but i also don't want to just paint a picture onto every shirt that would take a long time and so one thing i thought about doing was making a disco ball stamp stamping it and then putting that on a shirt or different things and being able to reuse it that way i don't know i still haven't figured that out this project didn't meet that goal um but that was the seed of inspiration so i first started carving out a stamp I did the grid to make sure that the dimensions worked out okay but I did a rookie mistake of not staggering the tiles even though I know to do that um, sometimes when I'm doing this free play because I'm not in work mode I mess up a little bit more which is like totally fine um, but this is an obvious case where I messed up so I scrapped that after spending like an hour carving it um, but no big deal. It didn't even stress me out because this is free play. Who, who cares if it turns out good? So I started over and I staggered them this time. It turned out amazing. It took a long time to scoop it out. But I even like the way the stamp looks, like even just looking at it, which is kind of cool. But um, I made that. I was super proud. And then I played around with putting different inks and um, paints on it. I didn't like acrylic. It dried too fast. I still haven't played with oil paint. Um, it's something that I'm definitely interested in doing in the future, but for now, I just wanted to see if I did. Um, I want, I've always wanted to try out this. I've always wanted to try making a disco ball with watercolor. I think it's really fun. I love the way the paint kind of dries and blurs together. And so I played with making a bunch of different circles, roughly the size of the disco ball, letting it dry completely, and then putting the stamp on top. I did this a few different ways. Again, I was problem solving, maybe not super effectively, but I was problem solving and having a lot of fun doing it. I finally realized that I like the watercolor with the pink stamp on top. I thought that looked the best. And so I did that on a piece of paper with a bunch of different color disco balls. And then just to sort of polish it up and add some dimension, I took some colored pencils and I colored in some of the boxes. And I really liked the way it looked. I thought it was really fun. It looks a little bit different. As for what I'm going to do with this going forward, I don't really know. The whole goal is that there is no goal. And so I could see myself using these for little cards or like thank you notes. Um, I could also see making bigger prints out of them someday. But I just really like that I was able to finish this and come up with a cool idea. I have a hand stamp that I can keep using over and over again, which is really awesome. And it was just a fun little experiment I did. I hope you enjoyed watching that. If you make your own hand stamp, make sure to tag me. They're really tough, but they're fun. And the nicest thing about hand stamps is they last basically forever, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, so I hope you enjoyed watching the disco balls come together. Um, I hope that you learned something about unstructured play. I hope you 
are gonna incorporate some of that into your practice, whether you're a professional painter or not. I think it's really important to have unstructured art in your life, no matter if you consider yourself an artist or not, it's really important, it's good for your soul. And if you can get into that little, that flow state where you kind of lose track of time, it's just one of the most nourishing things that you can do for yourself. And if you're a human and you deserve love and you deserve creativity, no matter if people have labeled you an artist or not, it's good for your soul. And if you do decide to incorporate some unstructured play, tag me. Obviously, if you do something with these disco balls, if you make your own, tag me. I would love to see that. I always love when you guys share that with me. It just like makes my day when I see that. And yeah, have a great rest of your week. Thanks for watching this video all the way through. And I appreciate you. Thanks, guys.